Welcome back to The Patrick Lane Show, where we talk about investing, personal finance, and real estate. And today, I wanted to talk about Robinhood and how they're getting sued because they cut off the trading of GameStop and other stocks last week that were getting shorted. Now, keep in mind, I'm an attorney. That's what I do for a living. But this is not legal advice. It's just for educational and entertainment value. So you haven't hired me, and I'm not taking you on as a client, but here we go. So last week, Robinhood, as we all know, uh, shut off all of their trading of GameStop, AMC, BlackBerry, and some other stocks at various different times. Now, they came out and said, well, we had to do this to protect uh, the investors, and we also had to do it to protect uh, our own business because we were getting pushback from the people we use as clearing houses, and they told us we had to slow down because we had to put more capital in in order to go through with the trades. So the problem is that anybody who was online on that app ready to trade on that day when the stock price was high, it was at about $400, then it was halted, it was suspended on Robinhood, and the stock price dipped way down by a couple hundred dollars, those people missed out on the opportunity to either sell their shares at a higher uh, price per share, or they missed out on the opportunity to purchase more shares at the lower price. In, a, in anticipation of that price going back up. And so the problem that Robinhood has is that those customers of theirs got hurt by their actions in not allowing them to trade. So what happened, predictably, right, we're in the, in the United States of America where everybody wants to sue over almost anything. Um, there have now been several lawsuits filed in federal court I think there's one in California, there's one in New York, there's one in Florida. I'm sure there are many more to come. Each one of those is first a class action suit. That means that that lawsuit purports to represent everybody who is a customer of Robinhood, the same situation <laughs> as the uh, named plaintiff in the lawsuit. And so they're, they are trying to represent everyone across the country who uh, had the app and was trying to use the app when Robinhood suspended it and they lost money either by not being able to sell or by not being able to buy lower and they weren't able to take advantage of making money. So what are the basis of these lawsuits? Well, I've looked through several of them and they all have pretty similar um, uh, factual allegations and legal assertions in the complaint themselves. The first thing that they talk about is the contractual obligation for Robinhood to provide a platform uh, for the users of the app to buy their securities. And that is a pretty standard um, app language, terms of agreement, um, and it I should back up and say that Robinhood is acting as a broker dealer. So if you go down the street and you see someone out there who um, offers themselves out to the public as a stock broker or a broker dealer, that's what Robinhood is doing. So those are the laws that they're going to be governed by. So after we realize that there is a contractual relationship, uh, the complaints have alleged that Robinhood breached their contractual obligation by failing to provide an opportunity for the customer, the people using the app, to actually buy or sell GameStop on those particular days. So that's the first claim, that they breached their contract. The second thing is they are claiming that there was negligence. And so... Uh, the assertion is that Robin Hood was negligent in failing to allow uh, the platform to be used by its clients to buy or sell GameStop. And if, if they uh, had provided notice, if they had let everybody know there was going to be an outage, uh, that it was going to be suspended, that there may have been a, a, a different way for those people to engage in that trading. But because they did not provide that notice, 
then they were negligent in their operation of the trading platform and therefore uh, caused harm for the people on the app. They could not uh, engage in those specific trades. They couldn't sell it. They couldn't buy it. And so they lost out on that economic gain that they could have had. So that's number two, negligence. And the third one is that they had Robin Hood actually had a fiduciary duty. Well, what does a fiduciary duty mean? That's sort of a legal term that means that you, uh, that Robin Hood in this case has to put the interests and benefits uh, associated with its client ahead of and above its own self-interests. Robin Hood owes a fiduciary duty to make sure that the trades get executed and placed in the most prompt and efficient and at the best price that's available in the market. And that is, if we go uh, back to how that is created, there's a rule that's called a FINRA rule, 5310, and that is based on common law, statutory law from way back. So cases have been decided that say that a broker dealer owes a fiduciary duty and an agent duty to its client in order to put the client's needs before the needs, wants, or benefits of the broker dealer. So in this case, the FINRA rules, which Robin Hood must uh, abide by, and the case law uh, show that Robin Hood had an obligation to put the needs and, and benefits of the clients before those of Robin Hood. So if we look at each one of these causes of action separately, we can sort of figure out uh, the likelihood of success of each one. The first one is the contract claim. Now, when you sign up for Robinhood, there's a long terms of service agreement, like everybody, every app that you have has a terms of service. One of the terms of that is that they do not guarantee uptime at all, ever. So you understand when you sign up for Robinhood that there may be outages where you're not gonna be able to trade the way you want. Now, that is a contractual obligation that is laid out and agreed to in the terms of service. So the contractual, the breach of contract claim, that may not get anybody anywhere. The second one that we talked about was the negligence claim. So in order to prove negligence, you've got to show that someone should have done something that they didn't do, or because of their actions, there was a, uh, a loss. And so, it's going to be very difficult for someone to prove that they suffered losses. You've got to then show that you had the intent to buy or you had the intent to sell and you knew that the price was going to go one way or the other. And that's very difficult to show in, in cases like this. So there, but it is a factual inquiry. So it may not be something that's going to get, get tossed aside. And the third one is the fiduciary duty based on the FINRA rule 5310. Now that one is probably the one that has the most merit because it explicitly says that there is a fiduciary obligation on the part of Robin Hood to put the customer first. And so in a situation where now we have the Robin Hood has come out and said, well, the reason we had to shut everything down is because we were going to have to front all of the costs of clearing these settlements. And in order to clear all these settlements, we needed to infuse cash into our system. We had to raise capital. The problem with that is that that puts Robin Hood's needs and benefits in front of the needs and benefits of the client, the user of the app or at least arguably. And so if we look at each one of those, I think, and again, this is not legal advice. This is just sort of me looking at the case law uh, and trying to make the best guess 
uh, that I can make based on what I've seen and read. Um, I think it's going to be very difficult for the plaintiffs to prevail on the breach of contract claim. I think it's going to be a mixed bag as to whether or not they can prevail on the negligence claim. And I think the most likely area that they would prevail in these class action suits is on the third one, which is the uh, imposed or implied fiduciary duty under the FINRA rules. Now, here's the interesting thing, is that most of the lawsuits like this, if they're going to get tossed aside, if they're going to get dismissed, it will happen in a summary judgment phase, which is where somebody says, we don't think the law has actually been broken. There's no law on this, even if all the facts are agreed to. And a judge will look at it and say, oh, yeah, you're right. The law is not broken. Uh, and so they'll toss out the case. In these causes of action, negligence and the breach of the fiduciary duty, generally the standard is going to be what would a reasonably prudent person in similar circumstances do? And so it's going to be a factual determination. And in the courts, facts are determined by a jury. Now that typically means that there won't be a case that's tossed out early, that this case is going to work its way through the system and allow a jury to decide whether or not Robin Hood actually breached its fiduciary duty and owes these people money, or whether Robin Hood engaged in negligent behavior and therefore owes the plaintiffs money. So that's just a short overview of what's going on. Um, frankly, I'm not sure which way it's going to work out. I think that it's going to last longer than most people are saying that it's going to last. It's not going to be something that will be tossed out quickly. But you never know what a court's going to do. And of course, it can work its way up the appeals chain as well. One other quick note on a class action suit. Most class actions, if not all class actions, will include everyone who's a member of that class. So if somebody out there has the Robinhood app and was actively trading GameStop on the days when it was halted and can show that they would have either sold or uh, bought and therefore either made money or not lost money, then you're probably going to be a part of this lawsuit whether you want to be or not. Now, there'll be an opportunity for you to opt out, but uh, typically you're part of the, uh, of, of the class, of part of the lawsuit. So that's it. That's the overview of the Robin Hood lawsuit from a lawyer's perspective. And I just wanted to uh, let you guys know, give you a kind of an overview of what it is, my thoughts on whether or not it's going to win, lose, go forward, get tossed out. I hope you found it educational and informative. And if you did, do me a favor and smash the like button. Hit the little subscribe button so we can get our numbers up. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video.